I was sent this video um, where this physician, this female physician was speaking on the harms that women were going through when they had male physicians um, as surgeons. And so I'm going to start with the video that I saw first. Because of that video, I decided to go to her TikTok page and find more videos where she is talking about the original, um, the original studies that she has done to that support this and where um, she had created videos where the women jumped into her comment section and were relating these stories. So I'm going to share the original one. And then I'm because that is what spurred me to look for the rest of her videos. I will leave her TikTok information in the descriptions so you guys can go and look at some of these videos yourself. You can look at some of the comment section yourself if you want to do a deeper dive into what this physician is saying as far as these studies go. But it's very, very interesting. And I want I, I love social media for what it's doing is making women is showing us that we are not losing our minds when we think that we're getting different care um, depending on if the physician is a male or a female. You guys watch these set of videos that I have provided and let me know what you think. I'm not coming in on the back end. I posted a video early this week sharing the results of our study that just came out showing that patients treated by female surgeons have better outcomes at 90 days and one year after surgery than do those who are treated by male surgeons. I truly did not expect the outpouring of stories of harm caused to people by physicians. I want to share some of those stories here because I want to make sure that I at least try to get more eyes on these stories. These are just a few of the thousands of responses left on this video. Couldn't breathe after C-section and male doc diagnosed panic attack. Female doc found it was congestive heart failure from hypervolemia. Male doctor said I had anxiety. Female doctor found out it was pancreatitis and admitted me immediately. I had yellow eyes. Male doctor told me my back pain was stress and anxiety. I in fact had five ruptured discs. Male ER doctor told me my headache was menopause. It was a ruptured aneurysm. Male doctor told me I had gas and to take Tums. Female doctor confirmed it was an ovarian cyst rupture. My male primary care doc told me I needed a psychiatrist when I asked for a specialist referral. I was in kidney failure and almost died. Male doctor told me stomach pain was from well water. Female nurses were certain there was more going on. My appendix ruptured an hour later. Male doctor told me I had a mild UTI and didn't take my vital signs. Next day I got rushed to the hospital in an ambulance with sepsis and could have died. Male doctor told me my adult onset asthma was probably in my head. Tests showed I lost 50% lung capacity. Two times, male doctor told me I pulled a muscle. Female doctor listened to me. When I posted a video early, when I posted a video early this week sharing the results of our study that just came out, showing that patients treated by female surgeons have better outcomes at 90 days and one year after surgery than do those who are treated by male surgeons. I truly did not expect the outpouring of stories of harm caused to people by physicians. I want to share some of those stories here because I want to make sure that I at least try to get more eyes on these stories. These are just a few of the thousands of responses left on this video. Couldn't breathe after C-section and male doc diagnosed panic attack. Female doc found it was congestive heart failure from hypervolemia. Male doctor said I had anxiety. Female doctor found out it was pancreatitis and admitted me immediately. I had yellow eyes. Male doctor told me my back pain was stress and anxiety. I in fact had five ruptured discs. Male ER doctor told me my headache was menopause. It was a ruptured aneurysm. Male doctor told me I had gas and to take Tums. Female doctor confirmed it was an ovarian cyst rupture. My male primary care doc told me I needed a psychiatrist when I asked for a specialist referral. I was in kidney failure and almost died. Male doctor told me stomach pain was from well water. Female nurses were certain there was more going on. My appendix ruptured an hour later. Male doctor told me I had a mild UTI and didn't take my vital signs. Next day, I got rushed to the hospital in an ambulance with sepsis and could have died. Male doctor told me my adult onset asthma was probably in my head. Tests showed I lost 50% lung capacity. Two times, male doctor told me I pulled a muscle. Female doctor listened to me. When I posted a video early, do y'all remember a couple weeks ago, there was a man physician who came on this app and said, why would women choose to go see a woman doctor? especially if they need surgery, wouldn't they want the best doctor for that? Well, in a study we just published today in JAMA Surgery, we showed that both at 90 days and even one year out after surgery, patients treated by female surgeons 
had lower rates of readmissions to the hospital, lower rates of complications, and lower rates of death. I'm Argavon, I trained as a surgeon, and I have a PhD studying gender stereotypes in surgery. I'm very passionate about gender equity in medicine, so let's dig a little bit more into these data. Both at 90 days and one year out, patients were 25% less likely to die if their surgeon were female as opposed to male. That is a huge number. Consistent with prior data, this effect is more pronounced for elective procedures. That means when you are getting to choose your surgeon in advance and go meet them in the office, if you have the opportunity to choose a female surgeon, the data suggests you should do it. The data suggests this is particularly true for female patients who have a higher risk of adverse postoperative outcomes if their surgeon is male than female. This study is not the first, and it probably will not be the last to show that female physicians and female surgeons have better outcomes for our patients than do our male colleagues. One of the studies folks may remember came out in December of 2021, also in JAMA surgery, and showed that within 30 days after surgery, patients fared better with a female surgeon than with a male surgeon. I was lucky to be able to join this research team and play a very small role in publishing this work today, looking at beyond 30 days, looking at specifically 90 days and one year after surgery. These data are part of why I feel so passionate about the work I do in gender equity and sexual harassment in medicine. The very people who are most likely to get pushed out are the exact same people our patients need the most. At the same time that our study came out showing that patients have lower risk of complications, readmissions, and death 90 days and one year after surgery if they're treated by a female surgeon as opposed to a male surgeon, there was another study that came out that was really important, and I apologize I didn't get a chance to do a video on it yesterday, but let's talk about it now. I'm Argavon, I trained as a surgeon, and I have a PhD studying gender stereotypes in surgery. The study I wanna talk about today comes out of Sweden, and they looked at a very common procedure, which is having your gallbladder removed. We call it cholecystectomy. Hundreds of thousands of cholecystectomies are performed in the U.S. every single year. Back to the study in Sweden, these researchers looked at 150,000-ish patients who were having their gallbladder removed. Some were having this done as an emergency, and some were having it done electively, like they were scheduled to have it done. About one-third of the surgeons in their database were women, and about two-thirds were men. By the way, you'll notice that in this video, I'm talking about gender, referring to men and women, because the researchers in this study assigned gender to the surgeons based on their names. Whereas in our study that I shared about yesterday, we had sex that was self-reported by the surgeons in a database. Researchers in this study looked at a few different outcomes. They looked at surgical complications, which they defined as bleeding, poking holes into organs that shouldn't have them, and something called bile duct injury. We'll come back to that one in just a second. They also looked at how long patients stayed in the hospital and whether they had to switch from laparoscopic surgery, which is with these small incisions, to a big incision. And of course, they also looked at likelihood of death. The risk of dying after a cholecystectomy is extremely low. So when they looked at the risk of death, they did not find any differences by the gender of the surgeon. But for pretty much everything else, they found you were better off, meaning you had better outcomes if your surgeon were a woman as opposed to a man. As I said, I just want to spend a little bit of time on bile duct injuries because this is one of the most dreaded complications after a cholecystectomy. So here's the basic idea. This green vertical structure here, that's the common bile duct, at least the lower part of it is the common bile duct. And then the squiggly green line that goes off towards screen left, that's the cystic duct. The cystic duct connects the gallbladder, which is the green sac-like structure over on the left, to the common bile duct. And that's important because the common bile duct connects to our intestines, and this is how the bile, which gets made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, gets to our intestines to help us digest food. To remove a patient's gallbladder, we have to divide that cystic duct, the squiggly green structure. If we didn't do that, we'd be yanking on the entire bile duct system as we tried to remove the gallbladder. And although everything looks very clear and obvious in drawings like this, inside a patient's body, it actually can get very confusing, especially if there's a lot of, a lot of inflammation. And so in some circumstances, surgeons may cut this duct down here or this duct up here, which is the common hepatic duct, on accident, thinking that it's the cystic duct. And depending on the severity of that injury, the ways to fix it can be simple to very, very complicated. 
Because this is such an important and dreaded complication, the researchers looked at this specific injury separate from the other surgical complications. Whether it was looking at surgical complications, whether it was looking at bile duct injury, whether it was looking at your length of stay, whether it was looking at the risk of converting to open, meaning having a big incision instead of the small laparoscopic incisions, all of these favored having a woman surgeon with one caveat, which is that if your surgery were elective, there was not a difference in the risk of converting to open, meaning the risk of making a bigger incision by the gender of your surgeon. And that actually makes a lot of sense because most elective cholecystectomies are technically much easier than acute or emergency cholecystectomies. And so the risk of conversion to open is much less in general for those procedures. The researchers in the study suggest that one of the reasons for these differences may be that women surgeons spend a little bit longer in surgery, taking on average between seven and nine minutes longer for this procedure. They also include some other suggestions, which I will expound on in another video, but basically women physicians are more likely to provide patient-centered care, they are more likely to follow guidelines, they are more likely to be collaborative, and they are more likely to be careful in their preoperative planning and selection of patients. They also pointed out that women medical students are more receptive to feedback on their technical skills. And I will do a deeper dive into some of these differences, but in the meantime, we can add this study to the growing body of literature that suggests that if you have a choice in the physician or surgeon taking care of you, you will be better off choosing a woman. And for the men physicians who are asking what we are trying to say, with these data, what we are trying to say is that the data suggests women physicians take better care of patients than do men. And what that implies is that there is an opportunity here for men to do some introspection and reflection to figure out what they could be doing differently to do a better job, to provide better care for their patients.